Hi everyone, it is me, Johnson Chan. Uh, the camera should be a little lighter, but you know, it's actually raining right now, and it actually smells pretty nice outside. I kind of want to just go out and smell the air in the, in the rain. I could uh, use some air actually, and it's nice and cool. So anyway, I'm only going to do this video for today, and it's going to be very different. All right, from what we normally do, uh, I think maybe tomorrow we'll do crypto stuff. Um, but again, the stock market stuff, the debt implosion, which is basically what we're going to talk about today. I mean, it's just hogging up all my time and attention. And on top of that, I mean, after this video, you're going to just see that it doesn't really even really matter. I mean, everything's going down, including cryptocurrencies. Okay, I guess we do need to turn on the light. That's a little too dark. All right, I'll turn on the desk lamp. I'll turn it off after because I would prefer to have the lights off today to save money on electricity. So anyway, um, all right, I have a pretty rough idea of what I'm going to title this video. But basically, everything that you are, you've been told that will uh, protect you, quote unquote, from a crash, I don't think that actually works. Because I'm actually looking at the prices and the charts and the price action. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work. All right, look, crude oil is down. All right, PDBC, all right, commodities look down. Yeah, they're actually down. They're not up. And obviously, cryptocurrencies are down. They're not going up. Like, none of this shit's working. All right, and then we have... I don't have it open here. Oh, I do have it open. All right, look at silver. This dumb shit's down. In fact, silver went up yesterday when the stock markets go up. All right, and I actually have proof. I will show you proof that silver... Because I've done this before on stream, and I proved that silver actually goes up and down along with the markets. It actually is not a hedge. So it, it's all it's all it's all wrong. It's not that people are lying. It's wrong. <laughs> so that's why today I'm going to try to get this because I don't have anything to do between now and 930 right when the markets open. But I'm basically going to cash. Uh, obviously, I'll maintain and actually grow my BNB minor position, which really just means doing what I've been doing. Compound uh, in the morning, take profit uh, before I go to bed. And, you know, that project's been growing. Um, yeah, I'm also going to put in two ETFs. Actually, no, I got to... Shoot. I got to worry a little bit about the stupid SEC stuff, supposedly. I mean, no one's going to, re like, report me or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'll just talk about certain things. Oh, well, let me think. <sighs> yeah, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll just tell you what the thing I'm describing is, but not the specific stock ticker, all right? And I'll obviously talk about, like, what's the dangers of it, right? Or the drawbacks, I should say. But basically, I'm going to cash. I would have maintained my crypto positions, but I'm definitely not going to buy them. And number three, I'm shorting the market, specifically the S&P 500. I can also short the Dow and the NASDAQ or the Russells. Uh, but I like the S&P 500 because that actually represents the entirety of the economy, uh, not just in America, but really the world. So, all right. So first things first, the U.S. debt market. So I woke up at like 6 a.m. today, all right? And the U.S. debt market was actually at like plus 10% yield, all right? And then all of a sudden it dropped to uh, 4% and then now it's down to two and a half. So right now the Federal Reserve is getting into the debt market and just buying up all the debt. So like Greg Manorino's video said yesterday, manipulation in the markets. So when I looked, so before earlier when the 10-year yield was at 10%, all right, I looked at the stock futures. Yeah, it was minus 2.5%. So the stock markets are ready to drop. The only thing that is keeping everything afloat is the Federal Reserve and this, the debt market. And everyone on Wall Street and the smart money, the real smart money, Goldman Sachs, the elite people at J.P. Morgan, the big banks, right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They know it's over. Right? And they're dumping all their shit, and they're shorting the markets and whatever, ha what have you. So, you know, so the Fed is obviously watching the stock markets. Joe Biden's, uh, Joe Biden said the White House, quote-unquote, is watching the markets. Yeah, because they have long positions in the stock markets, and they're trying to prop this shit up. So we have a full, we have exactly what China tried doing, like, decades ago when Mao Zedong was alive. We know how, you know how that turned out? Total collapse of China, all right? So, uh, yeah, so history is repeating itself because people are fucking retarded and don't learn from history. 
well, then they might actually be communists, all right? Because China today is actually not a communist nation. Like, that's just, they're just communists in name only. And which is why I don't like people using that term these days. Because it's all bullshit, right? It's left-wing, right-wing, and authoritarianism. That's really it, all right? You know, I don't want to digress into that right now because that doesn't, uh, doesn't matter nearly as much as this. So, all right. So when I checked that, I checked the prices of silver and everything else. So let's see. <sighs> all right. So, okay, here. Yeah, you can see it. So let me refresh this page right now. Okay, so everything's negative, right? But why is this thing going up along with the markets going up? Because the, the S&P futures are actually starting to go up a little. I don't know. Like, this thing just makes me a little nervous, right? Let's see. PDBC, is this going up yet? Yeah, I mean, this thing is down. So tell so. Crude oil is down. Silver is not really going up. It recovered more of its losses because it was down a lot and then coming back up while the stock markets are doing the same thing, basically, all right, because the Fed's desperately trying to buy this debt market now. I mean, I don't know. It's like it's supposed to be up, all right? It's supposed to be up, all right? Um, uh, let me see. Uh, bear one X. Okay, I need the Yahoo page for this. All right, this is supposed to be what's happening. This thing is a S and P five hundred short uh, ETF. All right, and it has X. It actually has a expense ratio of you know basically half a percent, which means you you're, you're if you buy like a hundred dollars worth of this after one year, if everything is flat, you lose half a percent. So you have what is that? Ninety nine dollars and fifty cents. So, see, this is this is what's supposed to happen when you buy, you know, gold, silver commodities, right? But you don't see that at all. It's like doing, you know, jack. It's doing literally jack, nothing, right? Well, and crude oil is down, so which is a very important commodity. So it's like, yeah, I've made my decision. I'm not like. Just in case I'm wrong, I have I have my cryptocurrency positions: Sphere, Royal Pay, Titano, and uh, BNB Miner, basically. But everything else is cash, and I'm gonna be uh, now again. I'm because uh, someone reported Greg Manorino. I want to play it safe and not and not say anything. <clears throat> but there's a bunch of these like uh, S and P 500, you know, shorts from one, two, and three X leverage. All right. I'm not going to tell you which specific ones because, again, legal reasons, but you can easily Google it, and this is an example of one of them. So I won't tell you which one or two that I'm going into, right? but I'm personally going to do a 3x. right? If I don't have enough money to buy the shares, you know, let me actually just show you something. All right. Oh, we need the other one. Uh, what was the symbol of that? Okay. Yeah, it looks like the Federal Reserve is going to actually succeed today, too. So maybe I actually don't need to buy short the market because 10 year yield actually about to reach flat um what are, i need to open a window <clears throat> let me see we should start seeing the uh, the stock market features start going up but they might not actually it's still down two percent but let me let, let's just see what happens all right it's called spxs all right sp SPXS. All right, uh, we want the Yahoo page for this. I hope I was recording. Okay. All right, so this, I think I vaguely remember this when the 2008 crisis was going on. I was still in college back then. Um, but I couldn't buy anything because the markets, uh, literally the transactions were not working. The market seized up. So like, you know, E-Trade was still like stealing all my money and I couldn't buy anything for like six to eight months. And then they finally gave it to me after, you know, everything was already over. It was such a bullshit. So anyway, if you look at the far left part of this, it says December 1st, 2008. And was at, this thing was at $73,000. It peaked out in February 1st, 2009, which is 113225 <clears throat> All right, because that's basically about the bottom of the S&P 500 here. So this is the S&P 500, 
Uh, I actually, we actually need the interactive chart here. All right, so we go back in time machine. Yeah, so February 1st, I mean, March 1st, 2009 was the official bottom of the S&P 500. All right, if we go back to February, this is where the 3X ETF short, you know, uh, was at its highest. So it's pretty well correlated, and you can see the giant dump right there. <clears throat> so this is what's supposed to happen when you're when you know when you think the market's going to crash, the whole world's going to implode, and it's like World War Three. You're supposed to get a thing that goes straight up, right? That does, and like people say, gold, silver, now cryptocurrencies. That's just that just doesn't seem to be the case. And I've been doing videos for like five, six years, and ever since 2017's pump and dump, right, which is how I made all my money, ever since the crash of 2017, 2018, it's really 2018 for in cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies have followed the stock market's lockstep, essentially. There was a couple of days, even a couple of weeks, where that, where, that, where that did not happen, but over time, it became more and more correlated. So, yeah. Yeah, and not surprisingly, now that the debt markets are stabilizing, thanks to the Federal Reserve manipulating markets, yeah, cryptocurrencies are going up. Which means this should be... Yeah, the stock market's still haven't reacted yet. <clears throat> but you can kind of see that it is starting to bottom out. <clears throat> because at one point, the S&P futures, this thing was down like 2.75%. And then, as, and then as soon as that happened, I saw the 10-year yield go from plus 10% down immediately to like, you know, 0 0.05. So, so it's pretty obvious to me that the Fed's going to just manipulate the markets of this month. So I think this will be the last month where the markets pump up. But then when we get that inflation report in, I think, first or second week of July for June, you're going to see that the inflation report for June is going to be like, 12, 13, 14 percent. That's going to set everything off. All right. And, and then and then what will happen then, you know? So, yeah. So maybe I have to make a decision because I do know the Fed is right now manipulating the stock markets and the debt markets, which means this should theoretically be going up, right, in value. At the very least, this negative number should be uh, whatever. But Wall Street knows what's going on. The big uh, smart money knows what's going on. So... I don't know. I'll, ha I'll have to see. I'll have to see. And yeah, you know, if you look at the pre-market of this too. All right, this is 3x. So this is supposed to be the inverse of this. So that means it's positive because the markets are down. And then you have to multiply this by 3, all right, for 300%. So, yeah. All right. So, I don't know. We have to go all over the place, but let's see. This is the S&P 500. So one thing I want to show you is silver. All right, so silver, PD, I don't, because the problem is PDBC was not in existence uh, during 2008. So, yeah. See, look, commodities were, go see, look, this was the COVID stuff, right? The lockdown, so the stock markets went down in February 2022. Look, PDBC also went down, right, along with it, and it goes straight back up, just like the stock markets, and now it's doing the same thing, dropping and going up. But, I mean, if commodities are supposed to be a good hedge against inflation, why is this shit going down and up along with the stock markets? Where's my... All right. Like, it's it, PDBC, commodities are literally following, basically, the freaking stock markets. This thing is... I mean, I kind of hate to say this because, basically, Greg Manorino is going to lose his ass, and I really like the guy. But, I mean, this data is just obvious to me. All right. I've been doing. I've been looking at cryptocurrencies the same way too, right? So I know it's be. So I know it's just going wrong, and I've done this proof before too with silver. So I'm going to show it to you again. If oh my god, that's right because this thing didn't exist back then. Price of silver chart historical. Okay. Uh, let's hope this one works. All right. I need to adjust this. So just give me a second. Five. And let's move this back. Let's move this back. All right, here we go. And note that the uh, 2008 crisis is shown here. 
All right, so first off, if you remember the 2000s, basically the George Bush presidency, look, silver is actually going up along with the stock markets, right? Then boom, bam, February 2008, we get the, uh, the Great Recession, all right? Everything's dying, all right? And look, silver goes down up down until October. Can I make this a little bigger? Yeah, up until October 2008. So we travel back in time. Oh, gee. What do we have here? Oh, the S&P 500 was also going down. Look, it goes down a lot in October 12, 2008. Oh, 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 oh. Isn't silver supposed to be a hedge against a market crash? In fact, Let's let's see what happens. Oh, oh no. Oh no, please don't mess up the chart. Okay, there we go. I gotta get rid of it. I just want to move this over to the right. Oh, let's see. Hmm. We know that the bottom of the Great Recession in it was in 2009. So let's see. So here's the price of silver going up. Hey, that's great, up until April 2011. But wait a minute. You know what also went up? Oh. The S&P 500 also kind of went up with a little bit of a dip, but by 2011, oh look, it's way higher too. In fact, they look pretty, uh, they look pretty similar, don't they? They're correlated. So, so basically I'm just saying that all this shit is bullshit, all right? Commodities are not going to protect us. Cryptocurrencies are not going to protect us. Silver is obviously not going to protect us, especially because JP Morgan manipulates the silver. So... Actually, I should keep, uh, what was it, PSLV, Yahoo? So let me see. Yeah, it's still down three cents. Yeah, great. Yeah, one, wonderful hedge. All right, wonderful hedge. S&P 500 future, S&P 500 is still minus 1.85%, minus 1 but I mean, uh, yeah. Silver, not skyrocketing. Yeah, great. In fact, it went up yesterday when the stock markets were going up, too, because of the Federal Reserve's manipulation. Yeah. I mean, I could still be wrong, but, I mean, there's just too much evidence to, sh to show that I'm actually right, which sucks because that means I have to find something else. So that's why cash, and I have to look into these, uh, you know, short S&P 500, you know, uh, you know, ETFs. So actually... Uh, I know what I could do that won't get me in trouble. Short ETF S&P, um, short ETF, let me just, let me just type this in. Yeah, here we go. So I will link in the YouTube description this, and you can find anything that you want. All right, this, th this thing actually shows everything. So you want to short crude oil or whatever, but I think the safest thing is to still just short the overall markets because you have to take everything into consideration you don't have to get too fancy here but again it's up to you so I'm gonna so I already know the symbols I can't tell you that because I don't want you know because right now everyone's losing their ass so I don't want them to blame me and then report me to like the SEC or whatever I mean this channel barely gets any views I mean I think it gets a lot of views but it doesn't get anywhere near as like you know someone like Greg Manorino so I will be doing, I already identified the 1X and 3X S&P 500 short ETFs that I will be buying because there's a couple of them here, All right? Uh, but I will mostly be buying the 3X shorts because I do like me this. I do, I do be liking this, all right? I got cheated in 2008 because, you know, E-Trade was an asshole and the financial markets were completely shut down. So I couldn't get access to edit my money to buy uh, to buy shorts in the market. So I was really pissed off with that. And then and then I didn't get to access to my money until well after all of this recovery happened. It was su it was such a fucking scam. You know that's why I fucking have always hated the government and like the freaking financials. Like I love finance, but I just hate the system that we're in because it's so evil. It's so manipulated. Right. In fact, I'm seeing it right now. You know. So, so June will probably be the last hurrah for the markets, and then we'll get the inflation report in July for June, and then that's it. I mean, it, it, 
I mean, I guess the Fed could just keep doing this, as, and as long as the world plays along, it'll just keep doing this. But, I mean, the effects are pretty obvious already. You know? In fact, I think, I think Wall Street actually knows it's calling bullshit on the Federal Reserve. Because they know that no one wants to buy this shit. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. How, like, can the Federal Reserve really do this? Can the Federal Reserve really do this? How long have we been rambling? 20 minutes. Oh, gee, it actually feels a lot longer, but we did cover a lot. Oh, so I already had the silver chart open. So, all right. I mean, I kind of already pilloried, uh, you know, silver, but, I mean, I guess we could go, go forward in time. But, yeah, look, I mean, silver goes down during coronavirus and then goes straight back up along with the stock markets. So, I mean, this thing, this thing just sucks. Look, see... This, look at the pattern of S&P 500 since coronavirus and compare it to silver. It's the exact same thing. They even line up perfectly. Goes down in January 2020, February, and bottoms out in March. S&P 500, right? Bot uh, beginning of the drop, February 2020. Bottoms out middle of March 2020, March 15, 2020. It's, it's perfect. And then the stock markets go up for a couple of years. And look, silver goes up for a couple of years. Now it's going down, along with S&P 500. So it's pretty obvious to me. Pretty obvious to me what the right move is. So, All right. So anyway, this is the only video I want to do today. I'm not even going to bother with crypto because it's pretty obvious. If crypto was supposed to be a store of value and like protect you from stock market crash, why isn't this thing surging right now? All right? Because it's the same shit. This thing is the exact same bucket as crude oil and commodities and silver and gold and whatever. It's all freaking going down. So, you know what? And it makes sense too, because when everyone's losing money, guess what happens? They don't buy as much stuff, because they don't have any money to buy stuff. That's why everything crashes, <laughs> right? And technically, you do need a crash, because then you become like Zimbabwe, where you have hyperinflation or Germany, uh, Weimar Republic in the 1920s. And then what do you think happens, right? You know, you got the wheelbarrows full of paper money that's worthless to buy a loaf of bread. And then, and then you know, that's that. All right, and we kind of know what happened to Germany uh, as a result of that when uh, the 1930s rolled around. I want to avoid saying the word so I don't technically flag this video. So, all right, let me see. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I mean, I personally think today is well, should be an update for the market simply because, you know, the Federal Reserve more or less has gotten under control of the debt markets for today, right? But, I mean, they're not going to be able to maintain this forever because when inflation hits, you know, 12%, 14%, 20%, you know, 25%, I mean, <laughs> I mean... I mean, I don't know, maybe the peop maybe people in the world, because they are stupid, and us Americans were especially a special kind of stupid, I mean, we'll believe anything, so, I, I don't know, maybe they could get away with it, but, I don't know, man, 20% inflation, <laughs> you know, 25%, that's a, that's a little much, it's a little much. So, anyway, all right, I don't want this video to get too long. I'm going to be watching this, but it does look like the Federal Reserve will get in their reprieve, all right? And, of course, people being stupid will just think everything's all hunky-dory. But I woke up early enough to see what was, what was happening, all right? My God. This is annoying, too, because I have to wait. I have to wait three weeks before I get any payoff on my short positions. That's really what it is. All right. But then again, I mean, we come from the cryptocurrency world, right, and Bitcoin. So we uh, we know what to do. And, of course, this does mean that, you know, while the Fed manipulates the markets for one last hurrah, all right, at least I, I think it's the last hurrah, crypto will be kind of stable for a little bit. Michael Saylor will probably be dumb and buy more Bitcoin, right, thus increasing his uh, risk exposure. Uh, and then that means, you know, DeFi and crypto projects will pump out a little bit more money. But again, I mean, the smart money knows there's just too much risk. That's why crypto is really not going up. It's just kind of like barely surviving, right? If things were really bullish, we should be seeing this jump like 10%, right? Bitcoin should be like jumping 10, 15, 20, 25%, a clear bold move. It's not doing that. It's like, it's just people are just getting nervous. 
Anyway, uh, I don't know. Where am I? I don't know. There's not really a lot of good-looking pictures that we could look at here. I don't know, this thing will look pretty good. Alright, yeah, it's nice and big and red, you know. People always pay attention to red. So, uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Uh, thank you again to all the old and new people uh, watching this video, especially from Brazil. Hopefully your Bolsonaro will get another four years or whatever your term is down there. And, um, yeah, so this is the only video I'm doing today because I just want to concentrate again on the stock stuff. But, I mean, again, I know that crypto is going to, like, none of this is going to work. So, well, except going to the dollar and then probably buying a short ETF, all right? But, again, the risk with buying a short ETF, aside from this expense ratio, because this one's 1.1%, 1 .1 basically, uh, I know that the Federal Reserve is actively manipulating the markets. And it's clearly, it's clearly, for now, it's clearly kind of working, all right? But I won't know until I see... Because right now the Fed is is hoping that with something this low, the 10-year yield, quote unquote, this is supposed to be uh, back up to neutral, right? But it's still down almost two percent. So I don't know. It'll be kind of interesting to see if the Democrats, after they lose all their shit in the next couple of months, if indeed the crash, you know, starts, you know, really unraveling. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if the Democrats will start bitching at the Fed, right? Because nobody, because Aside from Thomas Massey and like a couple of people, I think maybe even Rand Paul, like a couple of Republicans, nobody questions the Federal Reserve here, all right? Like Greg Manuel says, the Fed is the government. I don't know. I, want to, I actually think the Fed is more like a somewhat neutral party, right? And everyone's just bitching at them. Because, yeah, that's a story. Well, I guess we could tell the story. I had a, when I, when I was in college in uh, Baruch, I had a uh, former Federal Reserve New York Fed. I forgot what his job was at the New York Federal Reserve, but he was a really nice guy, really smart. Uh, and then when the 2008 crisis hit, like he was like very adamant that it was not the Federal Reserve's fault. But then he talked about how like the payment systems were all screwed up and how like everybody was leveraged. And then like the Fed just had, like just couldn't really do much, and, you know. But but you know it did sound legit. I just can't remember because the technical details of what he was talking about was like very complicated but it didn't make sense so i don't know i mean i guess we'll i, I guess we'll see i mean i guess we'll see because here's the thing you can still criticize the federal reserve nothing seems to happen to you so i mean i guess if the fed was really in charge i mean you wouldn't be allowed to criticize them all right so i don't know i don't know Oh, uh, look, the debt markets look like uh, they're going back up again. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the short-term debt is actually going up. Hmm. Uh, yield curve is actually no longer inverted, except for the 10-year yield. So, in order to fix this, the 10-year and 30-year yields have to go up. But that's going to cause more uh, price problems in a recession funny so what they have to do is basically bought so the fed has to buy up the fed has to buy up the three year five year and seven years to get this under control and then they're going to have to figure something out about the 30 year yield because this thing is way too no the 20 year yield is way too high interesting okay all right so anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how this goes. In fact, I see the drawings up here. So yeah, I'll definitely have to decide if I want to buy the uh, ETF shorts uh, at the opening bell. Because now that I see the Fed has successfully staved off Armageddon for another day. Yeah. But I mean, again, the point is, yeah, silver isn't... I, I don't see silver working. I don't see commodities working. I don't see cryptocurrencies working. I don't see any of this shit working against a uh, market crash, right? So, you're, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Actually, this will be fine. I'll see you all tomorrow, I think. I'll try to pump out a couple of crypto videos like we normally do, but I'm just very, very exhausted this week. I did get a great night's sleep last night, so we'll see how I feel tomorrow. Because I don't want this channel to have too little content regardless of what's happening in the markets but you know again this is unprecedented right this all, a great depression only happens once every 75 years 
and most people alive right now, including me, we've never actually been through, you know, the the Great Depression. Now it's our turn. So. All right, I'll see you all uh, tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, unless there's literally no projects to cover, and then I'll just see you next time. But, you know, there should be something. There should be something. All right, take care. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And you might want to watch this again, too, because you really need to drill this in your head, how any of these commodities, crude oil, silver, gold, PDBC, right, which is commodities, oh, protects you against a market crash uh, or cryptocurrencies. Nah. I don't know. The evidence says otherwise. All right. We have a fully manipulated market, too. No, it's up to you.